Hi, welcome back to my channel. Let's go through the last main cheat sheet of security in the GCP. You can use this cheat sheet for your GCP PCA and PDE exams. The first one is Identity and Access Management Cloud IAM. GCP resources are organized hierarchically. In this sample resource hierarchy, organization node is the root node in the hierarchy. The projects are the children of the organization, and the other resources are the children of the projects. Each resource has exactly one parent. Folders level is optional for additional grouping and isolating between the projects. Before I summarize how to set up policies at each level, let's take a look at how IAM works first. With IAM, you manage access control by defining who has what access for which resource. IAM policy defines and enforces what rules are granted to which members, and this policy is attached to a resource. A policy is set on a resource. Each policy contains rules and rule members. Rule is a connection of permissions with the format service.resource.verb, for example, pubsub.topics.publish. There are three types of rules, basic rules, a owner, editor, and a wheel. The predefined rules are the rules that give a find grant access control than the basic rules. You can also create a custom rules to the list of your organization when predefined rules don't meet your needs. In IAM, you grant access to members. Members can be a Google account for the individual users, service account for an application instead of individual end user, Google group, a named connection of Google accounts and service accounts, Google Workspace domain, a virtual group of all the Google accounts, Cloud Identity domain, like a Google Workspace domain without access to Google Workspace applications, all authenticated users, a special identified to represent authenticated user with any GCP account, and the all users, a special identified to represent authenticated and unauthenticated users. Now, if you look back on the GCP hierarchy, you can set up policies at organization level, project level, and resources level. Resources inherit policies from their parent. Resource policies are a union of a parent and a resource. If a parent policy is less restrictive, it overrides a more restrictive resource policy. If you want to learn more of the IAM and the security of the each individual Google Cloud service, you can review this service's last minute cheat sheet video in my channel. You will have some questions on IAM for the cloud billing in the PCA exam. Now let's move to the cloud billing. There are two types of relationships governor the interactions between organizations, cloud billing accounts, and the projects, ownership and payment lineage. Ownership refers to the IAM permission inheritance. Payment lineages define which cloud billing account pays for a given project. Here's a summary on the IAM for the Google Cloud billing. You can set up an IAM policy at organization level, the cloud billing account level, and the uh, project level. The billing rules defined in the cloud IAM. On the organization level, you can create a billing account creator, which create a new billing accounts. On the organization or billing account, you can have a billing account administrator, which manage but not create accounts. Billing account user, which link the projects to the billing accounts. Billing account viewer, 
which will view the billing account cost information and transactions. On the organization folder or project level, you can define the project billing manager, which is link on link the project to from a billing account, but no access to the project resources. I highlighted the IM best practices for the exams, but you should review the details in Google Cloud documentation if you have time. The first one is the principle of the list of privilege that you should always apply the minimum access level required. When you use a service account, make sure to rotate your service account keys. Be careful not to confuse the encryption keys with the service account keys. Don't check in the service account keys into the source code or leave them in the downloads directory. Use the logs from Cloud Audit logs to regularly audit changes to your IAM policy. Export audit logs to the cloud storage for long-term retention. Restrict log access with the cloud logging rules. Use the logs from Cloud Audit logs to regularly audit access to the service account keys. Set organization level IAM policies to grant access to all projects in your organization. Grant rules to a Google group instead of individual users when possible. Now let's move to the key management and the data encryption. You can manage your keys with the Google Cloud KMS. Cloud KMS performance cryptographic operations and manages cryptographic keys. KMS is not a general purpose secret store. You should use a secret manager for that capability. Cloud KMS resources include key rings, keys, and key variants. A Cloud KMS key is named object container one or more key variants, along with the metadata for the key. A key exists on exactly one key ring tied to the specific location. The keys can be backed by software, hardware, HSM, or external system, EKM. A key type determines whether the key is used for symmetric or asymmetric cryptographic operations. From IAM rules principle standpoint, you should avoid the basic project-wide rules using the Cloud KMS predefined rules for the list of privilege and separation of duties. You need to manage the life cycle of your keys. The key management life cycle is divided into four phases, pre-operational, operational, post-operational, post and destroyed. In the pre-operational phase, you can do key import or key creation, both the symmetric and asymmetric keys in the Cloud KMS. You can store keys which are created from software, HSM, or external protection levels, or perform the key rotation in the operational phase. Cloud KMS also supports key destruction and recovery in the post-operation phase. Next one is the data encryption options. Google Cloud supports server-side encryption. The encryption occurs after Google Cloud receives your data. The data is encrypted at rest by default. Besides the standard Google Manager encryption keys, there are two extra kind of encryption keys, uh, customer supplied encryption keys, CSEK, and the customer managed encryption keys, CMEK. With the CSEK, you can create and manage your own encryption keys, use your own AES-256 in the standard base 64 encryption keys with the GCP services. Keep the keys on the premise and use them to encrypt your cloud services. You, you provide the keys as a part of the API service course, or the customer keys provided by the customer side .boto configuration file for the Google Cloud storage. GCP uses the key in the memory and does not write it to the storage. Keep in mind CSEK 
is not currently supported by cloud storage transfer service, data probe, data flow, data flow at the time, and it is not available in all locations at the time of this video. With the CMEK, you can manage your encryption keys, which are generated for you by the Cloud KMS. Keep the keys in the cloud for directly use by the cloud services. You can create, rotate, automatically rotate, and destroy symmetric encryption keys. The other encryption is a client-side encryption. You encrypt the data on-premise or in your own application before it is sent to the GCP and decrypt after it has been retrieved. If you use the customer-supplied encryption keys or the client-side encryption, you must securely manage your keys and ensure that they are not lost. If you lose your keys, you are no longer able to read your data and you continue to be charged for storage of your objects until you delete them. You can encrypt disks with the CMEK and the CSEK, but here are the two restrictions. You can encrypt only new persistent disks, images, and snapshots with your own key. You cannot encrypt existing resources with your own key. You also cannot use your own keys with local SSDs because the local SSDs do not persist beyond the life of a virtual machine. Local SSDs are already protected with the ephemeral encryption key that Google does not retain. You can review Google Cloud Network Connections Decision Tree and Google Cloud Load Balances Decision Tree videos to get more information on the network in the GCP. If you knew the knowledge of the network in the other public cloud platforms, for example, in the, like the AWS, then you should review this article, Google Cloud for AWS Professionals Networking, to save the time to learn the network in the GCP. In this video, I will only highlight the GCP Share VPC and VPC Network Peering. Let's take a look on the VPC network peering first. VPC network peering allows private IFC 1918 connectivity across the two VPCs regardless of whether they belong to the same project or the same organization. For example, you can set up a cross-project or cross-organization VPC network peering. It is a decentralized or distributed approach to multi-project networking. It does not incur the network latency, security, and cost drawbacks that are present when using the external IP addresses or the VPNs. VPC network peering connection is not a transitive. For example, if there are three VPCs, and then you need to create three connections, uh, peerings among, among them. For example, you need to create a peering between the VPC A and the VPC B, then the VPC, VPC B and the VPC C, and also the peering between the VPC A and the VPC C, because the connection is not a trans transitive. Google Cloud also ensures that there is no overlapping subnet IP ranges allowed across the VPC networks. So you can imagine if there are some more VPCs, and then the connections configurations will be very complicated. Is there a way to centralize the common resources management? Yes, then let's move to the shared VPC. Shared VPC connects resources from multiple projects to a common VPC in an organization so they can communicate with each other securely and effectively using the internal IPs from that network. Shared VPC is used as a primary networking topology to enable centralized management of firewall rules and connectivity. 
useful for our service that must use resources from separate projects for independent accounting and billing. A project that participates in a shared VPC is either a host project or a service project. A VPC network, network peering allows peering with a shared VPC. So let's take a look at this example of a VPC network peering with the shared VPC. You can see in this diagram, network SVPC is a shared VPC network in the host project P1, service projects P3 and P4 are able to attach VM instances to the network SVPC. Network SVPC peers with the network A. So as a result, you can see the VM instances in the shared VPC service projects that are using the network SVPC, VM3 and VM4 have the private internal IP connectivity with any endpoints associated to the network A. VM instances associated with network A will have private in internal IP connectivity with any endpoints associated to the network SVPC, regardless of whether those endpoints live in the host project or in a service project. It is possible to set up a VPC network pairing between the two shared VPC networks. I summarized the difference between shared VPC and VPC network pairing for you to make the decision for a particular situation. You can only set up a shared VPC in the same organization, but you can set up a cross-organization VPC pairing. Shared VPC is a centralized approach to multi-project networking by configuring the security and network policy in a single designated VPC. On the other hand, VPC network pairing is a decentralized approach that each VPC network can remain under the control of a separate administrator groups and maintains its own global firewall and routing tables. This is all we have on the cheat sheet of the security in GCP. You can find more documents, guides, white papers, and blueprints of GCP security in the Google Cloud Security Best Practices Center. One of the white papers that you should review before your certification exam is the Google Cloud Security Foundations Guide. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. See you next time.